Hey, welcome back. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to create gameplay abilities as modular game features in Unreal Engine 5. So as you can see, this is just a custom plugin I made or a game feature plugin I made um, that adds abilities and um, attribute sets as well as key bindings to our basic third person character. And uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. Huge shout out to one of my subscribers who actually asked me to do a video on this topic. I hadn't heard of modular game features before, um, so it was really fun to learn about them and try to come up with a video for it. If you have any ideas or suggestions or even requests for videos that I should cover next, please leave a comment down below. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback and any ideas are great. So yeah, anyway, let's get started. Okay, first of all, you're going to want to go to the link in the description. It's going to be a repository filled with a bunch of starter code. This is all taken from the uh, Valley of the Ancient um, sample. Okay, I just made it more accessible to people because I know that some people can't even like open the project up. So anyway, you're going to want to download this code. As you can see here, you're going to want to extract zip files open it up next up we're going to create a new third person project let's just call it demo okay so the first thing we're going to do is add all the plugins that we need so first let's search modular and enable these two then we're going to need the ability system game feature actions and the gameplay abilities and finally we'll need the enhanced input plugin it's in beta, so it's just going to warn you, but you can just hit yes and restart. Upon restarting, you'll see this error message. All you have to do is hit this add entry to primary asset types, and it'll fix it up for you. All right, and then you're going to want to create a new C++ class. It's going to be of type asset manager. This is the same setup as you saw in episode one. This is just setting up like the game playability system. And I'll just call this demo asset manager. It'll be in public, create the class. Okay, just add this line of code to the header. Then you'll want to create the definition for that function and import this header file there. And finally, you'll want to add the asset manager as the one to use for this project. Okay, so with all that out of the way, we can actually start getting into the more interesting stuff. And if that section was a little too fast, uh, don't worry, I have a longer video in the description below. It's the first episode, and it basically just walks you through how to set up the game playability system, and that's all we did. But now we're going to actually start setting up the second part of this, which is the modular gameplay features portion. Okay, so first off, let's go to our main header and add this line of code here and our game.cpp and add this line of code here. Oops, there we go. This basically just defines like a new uh, category for our logging because the code that we're about to import will use this like new log category. So we just need that. We're gonna replace this later. So just bear with me here. Let's minimize this. Right click one of these folders, hit show and explore. Then you'll want to go up a few levels to the source directory here, go one down. And next you'll want to drag in the these four directories right in there. Now, as you can see here, the next step is to replace all instances of project name and project name upper in our project. But we can do that in a second. First, let's just um, replace these with our actual project name. Okay, these are done, and we also need to replace these two. I believe those are the only ones we need to replace. So let's just double check. Okay, all good. All right, so that's all we need to do there. So we can close this out, close that out, open up the editor again, and we'll want to hit Tools, Refresh Visual Studio project. Okay, that will basically just import all of those files that we added. You can see here, they just got added. 
But before we can do anything with them, we need to open up our build.cs file and add a few more dependencies. So let's pull up the list here and we'll want to add the enhanced input to our public dependency list. And we'll want to add modular gameplay and game features. These three have already been added as per the uh, gameplay ability system setup. So just added these two and we should be good to go. So let's just control shift F and find all instances of project underscore name, just like that. And our project is called demo. So that's all we're gonna do here and hit replace all. Okay, with that done, let's control shift S to save all of our files. And we'll also want to search for project name underscore upper. And that's gonna be basically our project name in all uppercase with no spaces. So if their game was called like the underscore game, it would be the game like that. But ours is just demo. And that basically is just replacing all of the uh, instances of like API. See how that's that's like just how they define it for us. So yeah, so Control Shift S to save all of that. And now let's try building. Okay, awesome. It built uh, the first time to failed because I had my editor open. So I just closed it, tried again, and it succeeded. So I think we're in pretty good shape. So let's open up the editor again. Next, go to your project settings, search for input. Let's close this and that. And here we'll want to change our default input class to be the enhanced components that uh, we added by adding the enhanced input plugin. Okay. All right, with all that out of the way, we can actually start creating our plugins with abilities. So yeah, go to plugins. We're gonna create a new game feature and make sure that it's in the plugins slash game features directory. And we'll call this like player abilities. And you can fill this in if you want, but I'll just hit create plugin. And first things first, set this to loaded and hit edit plugin and set this to loaded as well. That way it doesn't activate by default. Otherwise weird stuff can happen. And one thing to note is all that code that we added essentially added this new um, game feature action, add abilities. And it's pretty cool because now um, when you add it, see here we can actually populate a whole list of abilities that we want to add to our character. So let's see, we can add, we can add them to our BP third person character. And here's where you would pass in like the list of abilities and attribute sets that you might want on the character. But of course that was not valid data because this is empty. Um, so you can't save that. I'm just gonna delete this for now. We'll come back to it once we have abilities. Well, speaking of abilities, let's go ahead and make one. So right click, hit blueprint class. It's going to be of type gameplay ability. Okay, let's just call this, I don't know, test. And all this ability is going to do is, oops, print test. And ability that way we can activate it multiple times. Cool. With that ability created, we should be able to add it to our player. However, we won't be able to actually activate it because we don't have any key bindings set up. So to do that, right click, hit, uh, go to input, input action, and let's just call this maybe, um, I primary. And yeah, but maybe just for consistency's sake, let's call this primary. So it's like the primary attack, I guess. Open it up and we can just set the trigger to be pressed. So it'll get triggered whenever you press a key. And finally, you need to create a new input mapping context. 
let's just call this like player mapping context or player input mapping context and this is where we actually map specific keys to the input actions so here we can map our i primary and i'm going to bind this to my left click so mouse left mouse button and cool so now if we go into our player abilities data asset here we can actually add an ability to our player so look for vp third person and here we will pass in the gameplay ability primary that we just created and the input action we just created. Cool. Now the thing is, if I play this right now, nothing is going to happen because we haven't actually attached this input mapping to our player. So what you want to do is add a new, um, new game feature action. And it's going to be this one, add input mapping. Okay, and here we pass in the one we just created and we'll set the priority to be one. All right, cool. So now in theory, when, when, whenever we activate this plugin, it'll actually add the abilities we give it and the input mappings as well. But if we play this and I hit left click, nothing happens. That's because you actually have to activate the plugin in the game. So to do that, go into it's like blueprint drop down and open the level blueprint. Once inside, create a begin play event. And then we're going to call a console, execute console command. And I don't remember off the top of my head. So let me just pull it up here. It's going to be load game feature plugin and then the name of your plugin. All right. So load game feature plugin. And we called our our plugin player abilities. Cool. So let's compile, save, and let's try it. I'm gonna hit left click, and you can see the gameplay ability actually ran. Awesome. One other thing to note is that you can actually add um, attribute sets to our players, just like we added our abilities. And this is important because you might have abilities that require certain attributes like mana. So in that case, you would simply create an attribute set with the mana attribute and add it to our player. And then you can, you know, just in our gameplay ability class, create the gameplay effect that uses up mana. Um, so that's one way to do it. I, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I figured I'd just mention it because that's probably good to know. Okay, well, that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, I hope you got something out of this because I know Unreal Engine's documentation on the modular game features and the game playability system is really not great. So I'm hoping this will help some people out. As you can see, this is really powerful stuff. I mean, you can add whole, whole like ability sets and complete game features to your game without really modifying the code base itself like the main code base i should say um and it, it'll it should help keep your code pretty decoupled and easy to maintain and extend okay well thanks for watching please leave a like if you enjoyed the video subscribe if you want to see more like this and leave a comment if there's a specific topic you want me to cover next